we're going to go to books, eh? Yes. I mean, we, you and I could go on and on. But I knew you were coming here, so yeah. I, I thought, let me look smart and come up with that. <laughs> <laughs> books that are interesting. Yeah. So uh, one book that I've recommended before that I've read and uh, would love to re- recommend to people is a book by George Gilder mm. called The Life After Google. This mm. is absolutely exciting. It's about... The stuff that you're talking about yes. right now, the fall of big data and the rise of the blockchain e- economy, yes. uh, which is the space that you're in right now. I recommend that book. Yeah. And secondly, um, please, I have been um, suggesting this book on all my platforms. And we, by the way, we've created the Trevor Book Club. We've got a WhatsApp uh, uh, group for that and it's really going am- amazingly invite you to join that group I think we are now oversubscribed but you know uh, try one person or two might uh, might have exited this is a book called the coming wave uh, AI the power sorry AI power and the 21st century's greatest dilemma fascinating book in terms of making our policymakers understand what AI can do yes. I mean uh, for me, any leader who's serious about uh, going into the future, leading into the future, you need to understand this book. You need to, to, to try and, and get hold of this book. You read a lot. I know you and I love this book, yes. um, Zero to One by uh, Peter Thiel. Mm. What books have you, I know you, you, you've read quite a number of books. Yeah. Uh, would you want to recommend to our book-loving audience? Yeah. Uh, so for me, when I look at the impact of a book, Trevor, uh, it's a book which changed my way of thinking mm-hmm. in my day-to-day life. Yeah. Uh, so Zero to One by Peter Thiel mm. uh, was one of the very first books I read uh, you know, when I went to the US. You know, they recommended it, I bought it, and I ferociously read it. Uh, and you know, for me, I fell in love with it. It became my startup Bible. Uh, of sorts. Uh, and it starts really from the first chapter itself, right? To say, you, are, you now need to look at how do we build tomorrow. Yeah. Um, and, you know, the concept of just building a startup uh, and how you take it global, mm-hmm. you know, Theo, he's able to, to, to break it down in a very easy manner, Absolutely. non-technical. Yeah. Uh, anybody can get it. Uh, it inspired me a lot. Uh, the second book, um, I would recommend is a book called Freakonomics mm-hmm. by Stephen Levitt. Um, now, Freakonomics is a very interesting book because it talks about incentive structures. Um, and when you start to understand incentive structures, you start to understand almost any pro- problem we have in our society. Uh, they look at statistics from a point of view um, that traditionally we never thought of. Right. They have a chapter in there called uh, Why Do Drug Dealers uh, Still Stay With Their Moms? <laughs> um, and they went and they did this research and found out that some of the top drug dealers in, um, you know, in, 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 uh, in the metro cities in the U.S. actually are people with bachelor's degrees. Mm. You know, they're people who went to university. They did business. Some even have MBAs. Uh, but they are moving millions of dollars of drugs and they still stay with their moms. And you know, they asked them, why don't you have a big mansion? And they said, well, you cannot control the turf and have the trust of the people of the community. Um, if you are somewhere living in Beverly Hills, uh, far away from the action, you gotta be in Compton. You gotta be, you gotta be showing communities. If one of your uh, foot soldiers gets shot and killed, you gotta be able to go to the mom. That's and, the ecosystem, that's isn't the it? Ecosystem. Yeah. And 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 you know they they figured out that you know if you scale it up. It's applying everywhere. You know, the entire world operates like that. Uh, you know, Freakonomics for me was absolutely I, I, I've, I've had recommendations uh, to read Freakonomics, but nobody has broken it down the way you have. Yeah. So I'm going to go and, and, <laughs> and look for it. The third book? Uh, it's called Black Swan. Aha. Yes, by Nassim Taleb. Now, that book um, is you know, one of my old time favorites. Now, the Black Swan- Can, talk- I, can I just make a confession? Yeah. I've battled reading Black Swan. <laughs> I, I've, I've, I've started, stopped, but I eventually got, got through it, but I don't think I got what it's all about. Share with us briefly why yeah. you like it. In a nutshell, you know, this book is breaking down how singular events are able to have dramatic outcomes which we call these black swan Mm. events, black swan moments. So to give you a practical example, 
COVID was a black swan moment. Mm. Uh, why was COVID a black swan moment? It was unpredictable. Nobody predicted it could have happened. And it changed the global economic system. Big time. It led to the adoption of cashless transactions in most parts of the world. Uh, it changed how we travel all over the world. It changed global healthcare and how we respond. The whole world changed due to something uh, that nobody ever thought of. Uh, the coming of the internet was a black swan event. The smartphone was a black swan event. And all these events changed the tra trajectory of society um, in a manner that you know, nobody ever thought of. Mm. So the point of the book is to help you be able to identify when events are moving towards sort of this uh, black swan singularity. Mm. Disruption it, of it, some sort. Disruption of yeah. some sort. Um, it's very hard. Even in, in politics, it applies, right? Uh, there are certain events mm. that could happen that could just, just trigger, trigger yeah. a complete change. You know, the Arab Spring uh, is a good example. It was a black swan event. Mm. You know, Gaddafi did not see that coming. No. Um, and it completely changed. And you could argue and say Facebook was the black swan event which led to the Arab Spring mm. because Facebook was used. Uh, recently in, Ke time. in Kenya, we have seen a lot of protests. And the platform that was used by the Gen Z in Kenya is TikTok. TikTok. So nobody in Kenya ever thought TikTok could one day, one day be used uh, to mobilize the masses without a leader. A leaderless, a leaderless revolution. revolution powered purely by technology. Mm. So the Black Swan, if you, you know, read it, I mean, it's a dense book. It is. Uh, it's very dense. You need to give it time. Mm. And, and I, would, I would say you need to read it more times. I need times. to go back to game. <laughs> um, you know, but it changed how I see things. So mm. in my day-to-day -day life, even when I do business, the reason why I'm in tech uh, and I do what I do uh, is because I must be able to recognize when something is changing mm. and say, guys, let's, let's stop what we're doing. It's over. AI is one of those things. Mm. Uh, in the next five okay. years, AI is huge. You will not need yeah. armies of uh, of developers, Trevor. Mm. You really just need two to three guys, Absolutely. and they have the power of artificial it's intelligence. It's massive. It's yeah. massive.